Greetings, gracefully ascending masters. Thank you for joining us today for Are You Listening? A monthly roundtable discussing all things spiritual, consciousness, the metaphysical, the unknown, and begs the question, are you hearing the messages that you receive? I'm Beth Soulfire, and with me is Susan Walter and Amber Celestial Angel. And so before we get started, we're going to do some introductions. So Susan, take it away. Thank you. Uh, I consider myself to be um, a visionary artist. Um, after near-death experiences as a small child, I was given the ability to see into the angelic realms, which allowed me to see the angels in their pure light form. And I use this ability to draw your angel portrait and to relay any messages and insights that they might have for you. I have also created the South Asia Mandala Activation Guides and Meditation Decks, which assist us to realign with our original blueprint. I also create um, healing art with a conscious heart from the visions that I see during meditation and during dream state. Um, art is just my way of connecting with the div divine and to assist humanity to do the same, to recognizing the divine within ourselves and within each other. Um, and you can find more information about me at SusanWalterArt.com. And Amber? Hi, I'm Amber Celestial Angel, and a certified angel intuitive practitioner medium, angelic life coach, divine mother archetype, and animal communication guide. I work with the divine angels and archangels in all of my practices and am a regular conduit for Mother Mary. I have always been a medium, but couldn't open up with many about it. It was during my near-death experience in 2018 that I was told to come out and share this. Many things were revealed during that time. Family is very important, connection and community. I was also shown the angelic realm and God's light of love, so beautiful and bright and so full of love. Such wondrous joy and love was felt within that place that I refer to as heaven. And I was sent back to share this feeling with all of you to bring heaven to earth within all hearts and homes and help you stay the path of love and beauty and walk the path of love and truth and light. So you can find me at AmberCelestialAngel.com. To you, Beth. Hey, everybody. I'm Beth Soulfire, and I'm a shaman, an intuitive alchemist, a spiritual doula, and a holistic life guide. And... I came to know the truth of our living light consciousness after a severe and sudden illness basically took my life <laughs> seven years ago. And um, the near-death experience that I had completed my initiation as a shaman. And um, it kind of took me through a walk, a walk that I refer to as soul fire. That was the spirit name that was gifted to me there. Um, and it was a walk throughout all space, all time, and all dimensions. No space, no time, and no dimension. Um, it allowed me to kind of ex have the I am experience of the oneness of which we're all a part. And I use all of my experience and training over the years. I've, I've, got, I've got about 22 years, I think, in the alternative uh, health industry. I've been a massage therapist for many years prior to getting sick. I was a massage therapist and um, gotten a lot of training and a lot of healing modalities over the years. So I use all of those tools and experience to help you heal from trauma to deeply connect, reconnect rather with the natural world. Cause you know, we're, we've been connected. We just need to reconnect um, and to reclaim your sovereignty and understand yourself and your part as being in the oneness. Um, and you can learn more about me and my practice at bestsoulfire.com. And you can find me here on YouTube at best soulfire alchemy. Um, and of all the things that bring the three of us together, um, we all met through a roundtable discussion that Laura Eisenhower hosted about near-death experiences with the three of us a few months ago. And you can find the link to that below um, the in the description section. We'll put that there for you. And we decided to team up and to bring you this monthly roundtable round entitled, Are You Listening?, and so uh, today, one of the, we kind of gave it a little discussion, and one of the things that really came through for us um, th this week that really should be talking about is self-care in these times. 
and how you can listen to what you need um, through really tuning into your own inner wisdom and be able to find rest and stillness in the midst of the storm that we're in. So with that, uh, we'll just open up the table for some conversation and talk about ways that we've discovered that how to kind of live in that state of love and gratitude and how we find p uh, peace, you know, in the midst of the things that are going on. Um, so anybody that wants to go first is welcome. Or if you guys want me to, to say a little something, I can. So we'll just open up the conversation. Why don't you go ahead and start it off? Okay. So it's interesting because um, I actually – did receive a message about it, you know, over the weekend. And I, I put out a video last night. I didn't really go too far in depth. I gave just, you know, a couple of tools because I knew that we would be talking about it today too. And I, and I knew that we would be going more in depth on talking about uh, ways to uh, truly cultivate self-love. And the reason why that's so important, as far as my perspective and my point of view, is because Spiritual sovereignty is something I talk a lot about, but th what that means is just being able to step into your own authority, your own authenticity, to live your truth, be able to speak your truth, to feel deeply into who you really are. And, you know, times before all this stuff broke out and started happening, we already lived in a wacky world that kept us so distracted, right? And um, and, and it's hard for people to keep the grounding in the first place. It It, it has been. You know, uh, ever since we, the Industrial Revolution really came along, we've been so disconnected from the natural world, from our inner child, from really from just being, the having the ways that children have, which really, in essence, shouldn't ever leave us in certain situations and circumstances. Our imagination should really have remained intact. Um, and, you know, I know that with the three of us and what we do, this is what we help people deal with every single day is to figure out ways that they can take their authority back where they felt disempowered, ways that they can feel connected to the spiritual realms and be connected with their ancestors, their guides, their teachers, the healers um, in the other worlds and other realms. And that happens to exist too in the natural world, which is something that really speaks to me. So, um, you know, for me, I just, was connecting with, like, I went to set out on my porch on the 4th of July, and fireworks are happening all around me, my neighborhood, um, and because we weren't setting off fireworks, not intentionally, we just, you know, we're old people, so we just don't go get those things and do them anymore, like, when, when I was young, that used to be the big thing, but um, we were just enjoying everybody else's, but the thing is, is that we've got this incredible creek, and because we didn't have all this hoopla going on, it was the one yard that all the little fireflies could come and land. And I was just sitting there in awe because the fireworks display that I got to have in my backyard was straight from nature, her, Mother Nature herself, right? And, you know, all, all these bats were flying around and just, you know, oddly, there weren't that many um, mosquitoes out or anything, and it was just so nice. And I went out and lay down in the yard and just, I don't know, I just wanted to feel like enveloped by the earth herself. And just feeling that connection was so symbolic to me because I could hear all of the bombs bursting in there, if you want to, you know, to harken back um, to that. But, but that's what, you know, why people do it is a throwback to that to celebrate the birth of the country, right? So, uh, you know, I, and I'm thinking about that, though, how, like, that's such a reflection of what's happening right now on a grand scale that it was just really rocking and rolling, everything going on around me. But I was able to rest and find stillness right then and there and enjoy everything that was just right there around me. And because, you know, I made a decision to just, it was almost like an energetic pull in, like almost like a vortex that it created. And it just allowed me to have this incredible feeling of safety and a feeling cradled and rocked and cared for and protected, right? And um and it and and I was thinking about all the ways in which things are happening. And every time we turn on the TV, every time we put it on YouTube, there's something new rolling in every single day that just 
will keep us off of our path, right? And keep us shaken so that we're not like steady and steadfast and um, in our being, right? It takes us off our center point that, sorry if I'm tossing my microphone, it takes us off of that center point um, of ourselves, right? And so I think that's just super important is just to find ways because there's all different ways. You don't have to go and roll around in the yard and you might not be in a place where the fireflies are in abundance like in, here in Tennessee. So, um, you know, what have you guys kind of been doing to find yourself and, and maybe what recommendations do we have that maybe aren't a part of our everyday lives, but we know that work, you know, because we have been around the block a time or two when it comes to teaching this stuff and helping others on their journey. Yeah, I know with my experience in doing uh, you know, um, sessions with people all day long, particularly the last couple of weeks, so I've been absolutely swamped. Um, you know, of course, meditation always comes up. You know, but yeah, you know, also, so, but realizing that medi what meditation is for one person and what works for one person in meditation is not what works for another. So experiment with different types of meditation. And you don't even necessarily need to do the same type of meditation absolutely every single day. You, you know, you can mix it up and try different things. Doing a, you know, walking outdoors, you know, doing a walking meditation, doing some sort of visual meditation with an image that means something to you at that moment, um, or, you know, helps you feel connected. Um, you know, listening to music, doing a guided meditation, you know, I know somebody that you know to her it's running the vacuum cleaner because everybody in the house actually leaves her alone <laughs> and gives her the white noise to kind of block everything else out. It, you know, but yeah, you know, it can all yeah, you know, for some people it it can mean doing something like going and getting your hair done. Mm -hmm. Doing something that nurtures you that when you you know, have completed that time, you feel better and your battery somehow feels at least somewhat recharged. Yeah, anything to have that refreshment, right? Mm -hmm. especially, yeah. with, especially with everything that we've got. Look at what has been happening to us since the first of the year. You know, we yeah. had quarantine and then now our, you know, we're still doing this dance back and forth and trying to figure out what's going on and, yeah, and, and yeah. nobody knows where anything's going. And, you know, and for me, you know, um, I live in a much more urban area than you do. The 4th of July was, I just could see the energy of so many people just kind of releasing so much pent up energy. Yeah. Because they, you know, Definitely. and the kids were just, you know, not, you know, the kids were just so joyful just getting outside and doing something fun yes. for them. It's, you know, something that really, you know, just really made them feel happy even if it was just for a, you know, a couple hours that, yeah, it just, the energy in here in Kansas city just doesn't feel as heavy as it did before the 4th of July. And I think it's making yeah. it easier for people just to cope. Yeah. It's a relief, right? Anything mm -hmm. that brings relief. And like you said, it's, it's like a, it's like letting air out of the balloon. That's too been stretched too tight. It's getting ready to pop. Mm -hmm. It's the, you know, very much that energy right now. Yeah, so Amber, you, what have you had going on? Yes, yeah, so one of the things I've done, you know, since I really started this journey has been making sure to make time for myself. And this is even something I like teaching my course for mothers, because especially, you know, when you have kids, it is hard. <laughs> it's hard mm -hmm. for everybody anyway, because somehow, you know, you always a lot of the time people will have excuses like, well, I just can't find time. But then with the kids, you're like, okay, how do I find time? So I have made that like a priority. And, it, you know, I say at least half an hour, but you know, an hour is good. But if you can at least get a half an hour and, you know, whatever time of day, I prefer morning. And I think it, you know, it's, it can start your day off better. But if you have to at night, that's fine. You know, I even go into details within that, but here I'll just share some of that, which is just at least making time for yourself. And um, whatever you choose to do in that time is what, you know, what makes you happy. And if you're not sure, start 
looking, start feeling. And I go into, um, like, look at your childhood. What did you really love to do then? What are things or things you really want to learn? That can really take you back, take you forward going back. Right. So if you can incorporate things you love to do, I mean, if you like to journal, if you like to write, if you like to listen to music, do music, but, you know, divine, you know, good music for you, meditation. Um, I do recommend that as well, like meditation or prayer mantras, something also daily to get yourself in, you know, a vibration. So. Um, yes, I think that's important, like every day having something you say you know, like a good, upbeat, uh, I say protection, like people really need protection. And then also just, you know, how you want your day to be and what your goal is, you know, for yourself and for humanity. And I have something, you know, daily, I say this. And yes, then taking that time with whatever you choose that makes you happy. And then as time goes on, you know, that can change or morph into more, you know, it's like, it's ever kind of growing. So that's what I do. Yeah. And something that's been coming up a lot in, in some of the sessions that I've had is just people are so focused on other things. And even if they're trying to do something that that's making them busy, right? It might be something they enjoy doing, even a hobby. It's just maybe keeping them busy. Um, one of the things that I, I like to teach a lot is because it's worked for me, you know, this is when I was doing my shamanic apprenticeship, this is one of the first ways that we learn how to start healing this trauma that we've all been through. And I don't care if it was something that happened last week or when you were a kid, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, is to get yourself into a place where you can just be still for a moment and put your hands on your heart so that you're feeling your own heartbeat, right? And just take a minute to relax wherever you're at. If you can, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in the house or outside or on your porch, it really doesn't matter. Just to take a second to have that center focus in your, in your heart and to be able to say, like you were saying, Amber, like a, a mantra. And I, I know it sounds silly, but to say to yourself, I love you and I thank you. And to say those things to your body, right? those are super important because they put you in a place of living in that state of gratitude for yourself. Right. And you're giving yourself this gratitude and thanks and love, especially if you lead a kind of life where you're constantly serving other people and you don't, you're, you don't have time for yourself. You know, um, that's something that has really helped me is just that simple mantra to check in with myself, to feel my own heartbeat, to say the words, I love you, to say the words, I thank you. And, you know, especially after everything my body's been, you know, been through, you know, after the illness and everything, you know, and it's just saying thank you and giving that gratitude that you're still living, you're still breathing, you're still thriving, you're getting up every day in the morning, you know. Um, and then, too, I don't know why, for some reason, just the stagnancy, I feel like, uh, you know, people just, you mentioned in the beginning, Susan, just getting out and going for a walk. That'll do wonders for you, you know, just to go walk in, you know, if you've got a park nearby or, you know, if you have a yard, it doesn't really matter. Even if you're just getting up and moving around in your house because, Amber, you mentioned putting on good music. Uh, you know, I love my 80s. <laughs> so sometimes <laughs> I'll put on my 80s music and just start dancing. And, um, you know, that relieves a lot of my stress and a lot of my tension. And it also, it just puts me in a good mood, you know, it makes me feel good. Um, I'm thinking about that massage, though, you know. <laughs> I'm, still <laughs> about, I'm still thinking about that massage. <laughs> so I miss that. Back in the day when I was a, a massage therapist, I used to have people to trade with. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. Yeah, and uh, another good thing that's, you know, really popular right now that a lot of people are doing is, um, you know, and they're doing, you know, if they're doing the good practice, you know, good practice with it, it's morning and evening, but being, saying something that they're thankful for, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. some, and some days that can be just the, the, the air conditioner's working. Yes. That, that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it's hundred degrees outside, but yeah, yeah, you yeah, know, and another thing that I know that I've done that, you know, has helped me a lot. And sometimes, you know, cause 
the, you know, the energies just get stuck sometimes in different places, not just in our homes that we want to smudge and, you know, and do, you know, something to cleanse the energy in our home, but the um, mudras, the different hand oh, positions yeah, yeah. that complete the different, you know, meridian systems in your body um, and get energy moving through your body in different ways. That can be real helpful for, as well. You know, yeah, I, lo I love what you said about switching it up. Yeah, it's, yeah I, I'm one of those people I get bored really easy. Yeah. So if I did the same thing, you know, every single day or you know, even, you know, did this on Monday and this on Tuesday, you know, it, what, you know, had any pattern to it, it, I'd be bored out of my mind. Yeah, I totally know what you mean there. <laughs> Keep it interesting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, and it's okay to find, you know, ways to, you know, you can incorporate other people in your household too. Like, yeah, um, I remember when I was, you know, when my, some of my kids were little, you know, the dancing around the house with them, mm -hmm. yeah, it, you know, doing different things, you know, that really brought up joy, not, you know, because watching somebody else be happy can, you know, bring you joy too. Oh, absolutely. I know people that love to go to the park just to watch kids play because it's it's just, it brings them, my mom's one of those people, she loves it, you know, she's in her 70s and she's not getting around real well right now, but she will hopefully be having a hip replacement soon, but, but yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that she loves and, you know, she'll be going to church on Sunday and that's what she loves doing is just to see other people laughing and carrying on and having a good time. She might not be able to get up and get in and be in with them, but she lives vicariously, so to speak, but I don't really know if it's living vicariously because our heart, our magnetic field, right? We put out mm -hmm. that resonance and it affects everybody around us. Anybody within our field gets affected by that. So the more we keep our vibrational frequency up, the more we help raise the collective than our immediate family, right? Our immediate surroundings and our neighborhood and our city and eventually the world and even the universe. So. Yeah, because really, when it's, it's all about getting, you know, not only recharging your battery, but raising the vibration for you personally, for the, your household, and then, you know, extending that out. Because that's, that's what self-care is, because there's so many different ways. Because, yeah. you know, is it, you know, it can be mental, it can be to sit and read a book, it can be doing something physical, it can be doing something emotional by connecting with somebody that you love. Yeah. Yeah, it's yep. really the simple ways, isn't it? Go ahead, Amber. Yeah, it is. Yep, I agree. And I know sometimes I'll get off track, you know, and, you know, you're, we're working or, of course, everything that's going on in the world or, you know, we're working too much. And then, you know, you get not stressed because, I, I mean, we're pretty good as far as that goes for the most part, but you end up all of a sudden it's like overwhelmed, you know, and like, okay, wow. And then, then you just kind of look around and you're just like, I am, I've got all this stuff here and I, all this is going on, you know? So it's like, then you kind of got to refresh and take back and come back and get back in tune. And really to me, you know, having fun, going and doing something fun to get that refresh, refreshing feeling coming back and, you know, having kids, everybody, you know, probably needs to, but then having kids, like including your kids, like you even said, and sometimes also having just our own break without the kids, but oh, yeah. yes, including the kids mm -hmm. also. So it's like, mm -hmm. I think all those are really important too, you know, balancing, right, the work life and the play life. And I actually myself sometimes have a hard time doing that. So <laughs> that's why we're actually getting into the music and doing it as a family, like kind of a family thing, learning some instruments and making it a family thing so that you know, having that connection with each other and the kids and, you know, that's like self care. That's like family care, you know, along with all the right. self care and that kind of relieving some of that and going back into that childhood, having fun. So I feel like that is really important too. We need to get out and get our minds and, and all of it, you know, out of the mental clutter sometimes. Mm -hmm. So well, a lot of the times, and yeah, that can be in so many ways, just getting out in nature, you know, going outside, gardening, or just walking, like you even said, 
going to, you know, we do like to go to some theme parks here just to get out, go in water, go to the beach. We like to do that too. Um, nature is such a refresher, right? It is so refreshing being outside and that really fills you, you know, can make you feel like uh, relaxed. So, yeah. And nurturing yeah. all of our relationships, yeah, with our children, with our partners, with friends, family, yeah, that is a big part of self-care too. Absolutely. Check up on them, make sure how they're doing, you know. They may mm -hmm. be having a hard time and they don't know what to do. Maybe they have no clue and they're, you know, I, I know that um, a lot of the people that I know that don't have, you know, we're kind of fortunate because everyday life for us is a spiritual walk. We've got that connection. A lot of people don't. They still, um, you know, they get caught up in the everyday 3D, you know, um, just the stuff that's going on. I don't care if it's just their daily work and life habits, right? Or the bigger things that they carry the weight of the world on their shoulders for everything. So, yeah, I agree with you. It's super important to check out, uh, check on our loved ones and maybe encourage them to do some things that they hadn't even thought about doing to help take care of themselves because that helps mm -hmm. take care of that, all that resonant frequency, right? They don't have to know all about all that because it doesn't matter. It's going to happen mm -hmm. anyway if they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's all about setting aside the to-do list yep. and, you know, spending some time doing, you know, just something that, that makes you smile. Yeah. Yeah. And that one of the things I, I really, for me, I came through this week, which I talked a little bit about in my video last night, is it with the energies that are going on right now, it's a good time to just be still. And they feel into the flow of things and notice where there might be resistance, right? And just let things be what they are right now. And it's really difficult not to get caught up in that hurry, hurry, hurry. Let's go. Let's do. Let's plan. Let's make a project and follow through. And I know I'm guilty <laughs> as anybody of that because I tend to, you know, I work all the time. But, um, yeah, I mean, sometimes we just have to, like you said, I love that. You know, put the to-do list down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do something spontaneous. Yes, exactly. Spontaneity is the spice of life, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so one of the things that also came to mind is something that each of us, I think, can speak to. Um, is that, you know, one of the reasons we're together doing this podcast is it's called Are You Listening, right? So we can even ask for new things, right, from the spirit world. So if, if mm -hmm. we're watching synchronicities and following those, it gives, our, it gives our busy mind a little something, but it also connects us, right? So it, it hooks us li literally right in to that spiritual um, realm, right? So that we are receiving that constant refreshment. I know um, a few months back, I bought this little um, animal speak pocket guide, and I usually try to keep it on me wherever I'm at. And it doesn't matter where I'm at. It doesn't matter even if I'm in my house and I see a spider cross my path. And it may sound silly, but it's not, there's nothing like looking up, you know, what, um, you know, is being taught. Ancient wisdom tells us, right, that the animals carry medicine, all of them. And so if we have a synchronistic or an unexpected or just sort of a happen, it could seem happenstance to us, we can go and look that up. Um, and you can go, you don't have to have a pocket guide or anything. You can go look it up on Google and just type in um, whatever animal meaning, like if you see a hair on or whatever, and uh, and look up the meaning of that message. And I guarantee me. you. Yes, yeah. real quick. I know I do the animal meaning videos as well on my yes. YouTube channel here. <laughs> yeah, so check that out for sure, because those things are tools to kind of help you get into the flow of that and to start recognizing that synchronicity happen. So Susan, what are some ways that you help connect too with that, with people? Cause I know, well, you're primarily helping people with an, uh, their um, angel portraiture, but does that ever come through for you in the form of an animal ally spirit? Guide? Um, no, I, you actually, now that you mentioned that, I never really even thought about that, but no, it doesn't usually. I can't oh, say cool. that it never does. It might come through once in a while when people, have questions about their pets um but that's you know 
that I had something I'd never thought about. So, yeah, I mean, but how, so how would you maybe tell people to kind of look for that synchronicity or to reach out to their own spirit guides for help in like keeping in that center and to nurture and love themselves? You know, one of the things I tell people all the time, this is probably the one thing I say the most to people is to talk to your angels. Yeah. Ask them for assistance. Ask them for guidance every single day. You know, even if it's just something simple, like, Having them help you find a good parking spot when you go to the grocery store. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it can be simple things. Because um, to them, moving the energy around for, say, to find a good parking spot is just as easy as, you know, helping you, you know, launch that new career that you were, you know, that you're dreaming about. Whatever, you know, it's just moving the energy around and moving people or, you know, a lot around to line things up in, in our best and highest good. Yeah, and they they want to have a relationship with you, right? They, oh yes. They yeah, want they, they want that's what they're there for, as uh, for you they to call upon them, help. right? Yeah, um, and it, but it's hard for us because we get caught up in our you know little mind, and we're going and going, and we forget mm-hmm. to take time out and talk to them. But yeah. I'm telling you, it's like once you turn that on, sometimes you just receive. It's like, okay, we know how we were talking about refreshment. It's like going to stand under a waterfall. Sometimes you'll just receive this, like, you know, it's uh-huh. true. Ask and you <laughs> shall receive. <laughs> yeah, but you, you, you know, asking is always the first step. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. As, yes, I love saying that. Ask and you shall receive. And what I say is, like, you, you know, reach out to your divine loving angels. If you call upon, you know, the love of God, you know, um, and, listening you know the first thing is yes asking but then you have to be open to listening and now i say you can that can come in any form so that's why i say you know divine guidance and any type of guidance because it can come in numbers feathers animals you know the animals love to come through and you know just seeing a repetitive animal or an animal you don't really see much and all of a sudden you see it so it's like they're, they are answering. Now, it may not be, you may not hear it because not everyone has the ability right now to do that. You know, I think we were born with it, but many are kind of disconnected from that. So if you can, you know, try and open yourself up to receive only what's for your highest and best through the divine love. And if not, you know, at least be open to just know that, it can come in any form trying to come through and tell you and show you and give you that guidance. So if you don't hear anything or you don't, you know, get the sudden answer, then just know that they do listen and they do relay to you. It just may not be in that clear of a way. So you have to be, you know, look here, you know, see what's really going on and pay attention to how they could be relaying it to you. From song that comes on the radio, sometimes yep. there, yeah, that's another way that they can give messages sometimes. Oh, all the time, yeah. Look at all the matter we have around us. There's mm-hmm. literally no way they can't get our attention. It's just that, you know, that's the time. Yeah, we, t- we, are you listening? Yeah, we tend to get yeah. tunnel vision sometimes. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, you know, the other day I was even, you know, I spent part of the 4th of July um, enjoying the pool um, here in my apartment complex. And there, you know, there was a while I was just kind of laying there and looking up at, you know, at all the clouds. And I was seeing all these different shapes and things in, you know, in the clouds. Yeah. So those were messages as well. So, yeah, they'll use anything that they can do if you sit down and take the time to look. Yeah. And, and you know, so it's just your focus and your intention too, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you that's your intention, is that you're looking and you're listening and you're saying, "Hey, I'm listening to you. I'm 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 truly listening. I'm keeping my eyes open for a sign." Uh, they'll provide it. Mm-hmm. You know? They will. And it, and yeah. it hones and tune. It refines our ability to see. Right. The more we listen, yep. the more that we are open to synchronicity or, like you said, the repeating numbers or. Uh, the, cl- the formations and the clouds or anything for that matter, right? You could go down to the creek and look or you know, it doesn't really matter. What's a, it could be a, somebody's license tag or like you said, a, voice, a song yeah. on the radio. 
Yeah. yeah, I found that, yeah, even angels, you know, if they've been screaming at you for, you know, trying to suggest something for two years, and after a <laughs> while, even they are going to get fed up and kind of go back in the corner and just sit and watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, you know. Yeah, they can hit you upside the head with that clue by four so many times. And they <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love that clue by four. I'm yeah. going to start using that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many times have you been hit up the side of the head with that clue by four? That's a good one because they've hit me upside the head with it plenty of times. <laughs> oh, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yes. Oh, goodness. So, yeah, um, definitely. So look into the spirit world for those synchronicities. That's definitely a big part of self-care, yeah. Just making sure you're uh, anchored into that any way you can be. Yeah, just taking yep. the time to pay attention to what's going on around you. Yeah, and bring gratitude, you know. Mm -hmm. To me, that's always a big takeaway is to, you know, when things like that do show up, be in that state of gratitude. Oh, thank you. I, I know I remember one time I had gone, I don't know, I went through this little kind of a spell of depression. It's been about three or four years ago, and I just hadn't heard. I felt like I hadn't heard anything from my spirit team. And I was talking to a friend of mine on the phone, and she was telling me about, oh, she went on this hike through the woods, and she ended up finding all these feathers and all these synchronicities and all these neat things happen. And I got off the phone and felt like, I wish something like that would happen to me. Where have you guys been? And and I and I was feeling so sorry for myself in that moment. It was so silly. But I went out on my porch and and in in the midst of feeling sorry for myself, I started going. It made me it prompted me to start talking to them. And I was just like, you know, if you're still there, I need to know that you're there. Please show up for me. I kid you guys not. I had this little chase lounge that I was sitting on, and I had just laid there and closed my eyes, right, just feeling the wind. A big gust of wind had come, and it was just, it was blowing off all this heavy energy off of me. And I opened my eyes. I started to get up and go back in the house, and somehow, I didn't see them when I went out there. Is it possible they were there before I went outside? Sure it is, but I don't know. The point is, is that they brought it into my clear vision, my very field of awareness a cluster of all these little feathers and I picked those feathers up and I took them inside and I laid them down and I actually had my uh, shaman drum laying there and I put them on my drum and I and I laid them out in this just and I was just like in tears because I was just so thankful and the outpouring gratitude poured it was like this literal gushing where I just felt so much love right so much divine love and care and connection from them it alleviated all of the depression that I was feeling and the disconnection that I was feeling and I remember taking a picture of some of those feathers and that ended up being part of my logo that I have now and if you look at it's you know you don't have to go look at my logo but if you look at it it's like I put it through a filter but there's three little uh, it's like a red and blue part, a portion of my logo that's got those feathers in it. And that was before I actually set up my practice that I have now, my soul fire alchemy business. So, but yeah, um, that's just one example of how that state of gratitude can go hand in hand with, you know, asking for connection from the spirit world. I just kind of wanted to give you guys that little story. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yes. yes, that is beautiful. Yeah, I love when that happens when you're when you know you're finally let that guard down. <laughs> oh, the hard headedness by the two by four, <laughs> and you're finally like okay. And then I know you just feel this rush of love and joy, and like so thankful. And you're right; I feel like saying thank you every day is a very important as well. You know, I, when we're thankful for what we do have, we invite more room in for more you know, allow more abundance. So having, you know, this loving, appreciative attitude and um, feeling, you know, that helps make way for more. Yeah. And then, yes, to get those little things, the little, they're there, the signs, synchronicities, they are there if we open our eyes. And that's so lovely when we get to experience when we're, you know, throwing our little tantrum every once in a while, like, 
<laughs> oh, okay, why this? What now? Where do I go? What do I do? And then they are, they come through and they, you know, if we just relax and listen, our self-care helps that. And when we're, when we're doing that, then it's much easier to receive the messages clearer, see clearer, hear clearer. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, like energy attracts like energy. You know, atoms that are all same, all vibrating together, you know, at the same frequency will tend to cluster together. It's just, you know, same concept, same theory. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's that idea of entrainment, right, too. Mm-hmm. All part of that yes. same, same thing, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for sure. And, and if nothing else, Susan definitely knows, put on some sulfate. How do you pronounce it again? Salphagia. <laughs> Salphagia uh-huh. frequencies. Salphagia frequencies, yes. Those always hurt for me. <laughs> They're amazing. Yeah, um, I really enjoy doing the crystal singing bowl meditations with the salphagia bowls. They are, yeah. And you have those on your YouTube channel, right? Um, yeah, there's two sessions, um, different sessions with those that have been recorded during this time um, that are on my YouTube channel. Nice. Yeah. So, so everybody go check out her channel too. If you're not yes. already on it, because <laughs> we all post this on our channels, but yeah, check yeah. out those singing bowl meditations and check out, uh, Amber's, um, you have, what is it you called it? An animal connection session where you do? Um, those, yes, I have animal communication, like animal guide totem information for the different animals. So yes. Among other things, but that's one of the things I do. Yeah. And, yep, connecting with the angels, kind of regularly doing a thing there. And then specializing with mothers. So, and music soon to come, too. I'm hoping to do that. Uh, well, we are doing that, but um, more to come with that. So I'm hoping to, I don't know if that's like selfagio, if that's like connected. What is, you know, like uh, when do the yeah, heart um, Change your and, instruments you know, to frequency vibration. 432 okay. instead of 440. So if you want um, to do or that, or 444, Susan, either one of those ooh, would be much more healing, much more beneficial. Is there a way that you can do that on the music that you're listening to, or are you? Um, uh, yeah, are you kinda... um, I know there used to be some different apps or websites where you could go to and, and convert your music. Um, I don't know of any that are still active at this moment. So if anybody out there knows of any, um, please let me know. Yeah, you know, know. Share it in the comments, please. Um, but uh, yeah, I know there have been, and it's so many more mu- musicians all the time are learning about the healing properties of the aphasia frequencies and are starting to tune their instruments to it. You will, um, on YouTube, I know you can find quite a bit of music um, that has been. Oh, I, I can tell a difference immediately in listening between the two. Like, there's no yeah. comparison. It's like you, I don't know, it's like you automatically feel lower vibrational. It, uh, you um, yeah, the four actually Maybe by seven, design that seven. way. It's, it'll separate the frequency that connects um, the brain tissue that is in your heart and the brain tissue in your head, where the four, yeah. the, you know, the sophagia frequencies will connect those. Yeah, and just realign you with your original group, our, our original blueprint as human beings. And that's our whole goal, right? That's yeah. why we do what we do for a living is to reconnect mm-hmm. each other and ourselves with that divine mm-hmm. blueprint, right? We've mm-hmm. been so disconnected from that. Not yeah, off on another topic. yeah um, I was telling somebody today that the, um, in my opinion, the first lie that humanity um, was ever told or ever spoke was that we are separated. A ho, sister, aho. I was to say amen, but amen, aho. Namaste. I totally mm-hmm. get it. Yeah. No, I agree. Mm-hmm. Separation, uh, separation. I feel like shame is a big thing that holds us back. Like yes. it keeps us separated from the truth of who we really are. And I'm a firm believer that to believe anything other than the fact, to me is fact, by my experience is fact, that we were born pure beings, 
of yes. love and light is not true. It is a lie, like you said. And it's the ultimate thing that not only keeps us under the illusion of separation, but it keeps us divided. It keeps us fighting with ourselves. It keeps us mm-hmm. fighting with each other. It keeps us having differences of that. It's fine to have diversity. It's not fine to not like people over it. You know, it's this right. whole thing that should be about acceptance, not just that's why the personal sovereignty is so important, right? Because you're accepting yourself wholly and unconditionally for who you are, self-acceptance. If you can do that for yourself, then you can do that for your loved ones and for the people that you meet and your friends and, mm-hmm. you know, society as a whole and humanity as a whole to love and accept us for who we are, not for what we do, you know? Yeah, we've forgotten to how to have those discussions about the important issues uh, but still, yeah, and be able to agree to disagree yes. and have different perspectives and learn those and learn different things, be, you know, ex- and explore different ideas with each other. Yeah. And we need to do that again. Yeah. And it's fun for you to, you know, I love it. I mean, there's no, there's absolutely no harm whatsoever in sitting and taking in somebody else's belief, Right. That's what gives us cultural differences or heritage differences or, you know, it really doesn't matter, just our life experience in general. Your experience over here has been this. My experience over here has been that. Let's talk about them together and exchange experiences and we'll both come away more full, right? Right. And that's kind of how I see it. It's it's more of a a unification rather than, Mm -hmm. you know, well, that just makes us different. And so that we're just not the same, you and I, (laughs) you know. But yeah, you're right. This is these are issues that are not talked about enough. So maybe we can touch on something, you know, go in a little deeper to these things on one of our episodes in the future. If yeah, you are interested. we've gotten off track a little here, but I, I think it's been yeah. a wonderful discussion. I've enjoyed it. They'll put it on my headstone. She digressed. <laughs> <laughs> Coral. <laughs> um, we can go around again and kind of touch back on what we came up with. So what self-care for you really matters, you know, you watching, all of you watching, um, think about it. If you don't know, think about it and come up with something daily for yourself. You know, is my opinion, come up with something daily for yourself that makes you feel good and make sure you take that time for yourself. Make time for yourself because you have to be like we have to be our best for everyone else around us. You know, we need to love ourselves, care for ourselves. Just, you know, when we do that, we can give so much more and we're open to receive. It's like, you know, a lot of time people get stuck giving, right? And then they don't receive. So we all get stuck in that sometimes, but I mean, I've gotten a lot better with not doing that so much. I've really had to, you know, when you're caring for yourself and loving yourself, then you know and see and realize you're only your best when you're your best self. So yes, that's so important. So the card that I drew for us is vacation. Take time for relaxation and adventure and then see how we were talking about feathers, flying birds, like signs. Look, there's some right there, guys. (laughs) Oh, that's beautiful. I love it. All those purples and yellows and greens. Yes. So you deserve a rest. Oh, what's that? That's a good example. I was just going to say that picture to me is such a good example of variety as a spice of life. (laughs) It's an an embodiment of that, but go ahead. Yes. Yeah. It touched on everything, huh? You deserve a rest time for long sleeps, massages, sunbathing, or playing in the snow, water you know what water came up a lot for all of us today and this was in also my reading that i did just not long ago for the moon and upcoming time water like that's so important i feel like it's cleansing you know refreshing so physically or just emotionally mentally in all ways um i think that's important Okay, and then rejuvenate and nurture your mind, body, and spirit with plenty of rest and simple pleasures. Explore the universe as it is filled with wonder, joy, and magical things. You may be going away on a family vacation, a short getaway, or a romantic trip. 
It is important to remember the everlasting memories and bond you are creating. So a little something here. I enjoy a vacation to rest and rejuvenate my mind, body, and spirit. So beautiful, because we had touched on that as well, right? That we need to take okay. that time and play outside of work and chaos. Absolutely. It's a necessity, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so did you draw a card for this evening, Beth? I did. Um, I was using my uh, Angels and Ancestors Oracle card deck. I, I really have dug it lately. And... Um, and it was funny because when I was shuffling, one just flipped out. And I, and I didn't really, you know, have you guys ever gotten one? No, you have. You get a card and you're like, really? <laughs> 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 but then you, you're like, no, well, that makes total sense. So the one that I drew is the mountains. I don't know if you can see that. Okay. But um, the message for this is to know that heaven and earth are supporting you. And of course, we know that mountains are strong and they're wise and they are rooted deep into the earth and they reach high into the sky and they've been where they are for thousands of years. They've been home to animals. They've been climbed on by humans and they've seen the seasons come and go. And no matter what happened to them, they've remained strong and movable and unshakable. So they offer the spiritual energies of strength and resilience. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mountain energy is powerful because it's firmly rooted in the great mother and reaches high into the great father. If you're feeling challenged or pressured at this time, know that your spirit is more powerful than you think. You are resilient and grounded in the energy and air of the mountains is giving you the unshakable strength to be who you are. Take time to root yourself deeply in the energy of earth before welcoming in the energies of heaven. If you're not sure what you need to do next, the mountain card invites you to stay exactly where you are, talk things over with those around you, and know that change will come to you. You will be whole and well at the end of the current situation, and it will not stand in the way of your future growth and expansion. And I love that so much because, I mean, obviously, it's the perfect message, and Kind of an embodiment of everything that we've been talking about, right? Yes. So. yes. Wow, yes, that yeah. was perfect. It really touched mm -hmm. on, we ended up going from our self-care and grounding and earth and then also how we can listen, how you can yeah. open up and, and hear the messages and connecting. Yeah, absolutely. What about you, Susan? Did you get one? Oh, you did. Um, you did. Yeah, this is... Um, Salphagia frequency yeah, 825. Eight, it is from the Cygna set and it is about the journey from the head to the heart. It's actually called mm. yeah, journey to the heart. Yeah, and sometimes that can be yeah, the longest 18 inches we can ever travel in our life. But yeah. yet it's yeah. also the most <laughs> rewarding. Yeah, because it's like when you really make that journey to your heart and take the time to listen to, yeah, listen to your heart and the message that, is, that come from there, that's where a lot of, you know, joy comes from. That is where, yeah, that is what recharges our personal batteries. You know, if we, cause if we don't do the self care, we don't take care of ourselves, our battery gets completely run dry and we have nothing left to give. That's right. So until, yeah. Yeah, until we take the, do the self care <laughs> to recharge the battery and recharge, you know, recharge our hearts. Yeah. And that heart brain connection, it's super important, right? Because yeah. that's what, that's, that's the, that's what keeps us in the middle of our own wheel. That's what keeps us like this mountain, right? So we're super grounded and we are like that mountain who will not be moved so that when these energies come along, they don't sweep us right off of our feet, right? right. It's not so easy for us to get carried away because we are very still in the midst of a storm. So I think yes, those are beautiful, we're, beautiful takeaways. Yes, and we're able, yes, we're able to trust that intuition so much better. You know, it guides us right mm -hmm. when we're like, you know, have that connection. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. 
We hope you really enjoyed this content tonight. And if you do, be sure to like and subscribe and share it with any loved ones that you have or family, friends that you think might really be able to get a lot out of this video or would just enjoy the information. Um, and we welcome your comments as always. And if you have any ideas or topics that you'd like to see us cover in future episodes, please don't hesitate to leave us a comment below. Um, and we, this is an episode that we do, or this podcast rather, is something that we do the second Friday of every month. So look for it on each of our channels and we will see you on the other side. <laughs> For another episode Bye. of Are You Listening? Keep your ears open, everybody. Bye. Bye. Namaste. <laughs>